Hi, this is Mr. Yeager for uh, Virtual Physics. Um, today I am looking at uh, tension problems, looking at tension problems. Um, we did some of these in the last unit where basically an object is just hanging, um, just as uh, it's hanging from a rope. Um, obviously, like you can see, this would be your free body diagram that you would draw where the only two forces acting on the object would be tension up and weight down. And we really only do these problems, other than with elevators, where they're hanging perfectly still, okay? And so if they're acting perfectly still, we could say the tension will equal the weight. So if I can find the weight of the object, M times G, I know the tension in the rope, all right? So it's nothing new here. We are, we're going to continue looking at tension problems in a state of what we call equilibrium. which in this case means that they are at rest, all right? But the thing is, in this next unit, we are focused more on what are called 2D force problems. So we're more interested in what happens when you have two ropes that are helping hang an object, and they're at a particular angle, all right? How can I try to solve this particular problem? So let's go ahead and look at this one. How can we try to solve this? Okay, we have two tensions, TA and TB. Uh, going at an angle, we know the angle for one of those two tensions, and we know that the tension is 450 newtons. And then obviously you have the weight pulling down on the object. Okay? So, how would I approach this particular problem? In this case, you have to think of what will equal what? Why is this thing staying perfectly still? What is happening with this particular force? All right? And we can only have forces interact with each other when they are straight up and down against each other or left and right. All right? So the first thing we have to notice is TA and TB do not interact with W directly. We can't just simply go TA plus TB will equal W. Okay? That is not correct. They are not. I can't add these and say they are equal to this. That would be incorrect. All right? Instead, I need to go, I need to look at this from a component standpoint, okay? From a component view, I can change this force into two components. Just like we did with velocity back in projectiles, we can do this with force. Force is a vector, so it has magnitude and direction, and that means I can change it into two components, which I'm going to simply call TAX and TAY, okay? An X and Y component. I can do the same thing with TB. TB can be separated into two components, TBX and TBY. Now I have forces straight up and down and left and right, and I can talk about what do these possibly mean. All right? And so may, probably the idea here is I'm trying to really find what is the tension in B. All right? That's probably the question. How can I find the tension in the other rope based on the problem? Okay? And so, if I look at this problem, there's a few things I could possibly solve for. I can figure out the weight. That would be m times g, which would be 5 times 10, equals 50 newtons. So the weight of this object is 50 newtons. Well, what is this weight going to oppose? What is this going to work against? Well, look at that. Weight is only going to oppose upward forces. And so that means there are two upward forces here, TAY and TBY. And so what that means is the weight will equal the two vertical, the two y components. All right? So I have one number here, and I can solve for TAY. I know this is related to the hypotenuse. This is opposite side, so TAY is going to be, I'll write this over here, TAY will equal TA sine of 45. It will be the sine function. Okay, sine 45 will equal TAY over TA. I can solve for TAY. And so if I plug that on in, TAY will equal 50 times sine of 45. And that will equal 35 newtons. All right? I will generally round things off to nice whole numbers. I'm not going to go ahead and mess with too many decimals here because we don't have to be like absolutely perfectly exact. So, if TAY is 35 newtons, how much is TBY holding up? Well, it's going to hold up the rest of the weight. 50 will equal 35 plus TBY. We can very easily figure it out that TBY is equal to 15 newtons. 
So now you know one side of the triangle on the opposite side of the, on the tension for TB. The thing is, I still don't know what the angle is, and I don't know what TBX is. All right, so I need one more factor here. And so one more factor I can solve for is I can solve for TAX. If I solve for TAX, all right, TAX is going to equal TA cosine of 45. So this would be 50 times cosine of 45, which is actually going to be the same thing. Just confirm it. It's going to be 35 newtons as well, since the you have a 45 degree angle, both these sides must be the same. So, if TAX is 35 newtons, which is, it is in this problem, don't think that TAY, TAX and TAY are always equal. It just happens because it's 45 degrees. What, how can I relate this to TBX? <coughs> well, let's think about it. How many forces to the left? One, 35 newtons. How many forces to the right? Only one. Is this object moving left or right? No. So that means these left and right forces must be equal. TBX must equal TAX, which equals 35 newtons. And now that you have two out of the four things you need in a triangle, being the three sides and the angle, if you have two of those, you can now solve for anything else. And so I can use Pythagorean theorem to figure out TB. So I do the square root of 35 squared plus 15 squared because that's equal to TB squared, so I already do the square root there, speed things up. 35 squared plus 15 squared, square root. The tension in the other rope is going to be 38 newtons. All right. That would be what I can find. If I want to figure out the angle, I would probably just do the inverse tangent of TBY and TBX. It would be 15 divided by 35, and take the inverse tangent of that, this is actually at about a 23 degree angle. All right? So right, we did a lot there. There's a whole lot of stuff we just did there. Let me go ahead and sum this all up. Okay? On any tension problem, this is what you need to know. There's two always rules. These, these are always true. And the problems are about to give you an equilibrium. Okay? The horizontal components will always be equal. That's because the object is held perfectly still. It's not moving left or right. They must be perfectly equal. It is always possible that we can add more ropes to it. So there might be, you know, maybe two ropes to the left and one rope to the right. Well, then you might have to do a quick equation. But what we're saying is the total tension left must equal total tension to the right. The vertical components will always, always counter the weight. All right. So I need to add up those two upward components to overcome the weight pulling it down. Now this last step, number three, I have starred, and it's because this is not an always situation. This is a, I'm going to just call it a maybe situation, okay, or a possible situation. But it's something worth trying to notice because this will happen quite a bit. If, keyword if, the angles of the two ropes are equal to each other, in other words, if these two angles were equal to each other, which they're not, so this, we have to ignore this rule, but if they were, that means that now TAY and TBY will equal each other because we have identical triangles. TAY would equal TBY. The thing is, I'd still have to add these two to equal the weight. Number, two, this, number three does not eliminate number two. One and two are always followed. Number three is just a helpful rule if you can remember and, you, and apply it appropriately. TAY will equal TBY if they're equal and must add up to the weight, they'll equal half of the weight. So that's a big trick to notice because there's going to be a lot of problems you're going to see in just a moment where the angles on both sides are equal. So let's try a couple problems together. And look at this right here. A stoplight is hung with two wires both hanging at a 45 degree angle from the horizontal. The tension in each wire is 60 newtons. So if I set up my problem, I have a stoplight hanging down with weight, and I have two tensions on either side. I'm going to call it T1 and T2. You can use letters, you can use numbers. All right. This is at a 45 degree angle. Make sure you understand from the horizontal, so the angle is drawn up from the horizontal. Okay. And I know the tensions on both sides is 60 newtons. The question is, what's the mass of the stoplight? 
Well, the only way to find mass is I need to know the weight. So I need to figure out the weight. So think about what we need to find. If I want to find weight, the only rule that I need to apply is P1Y plus T2Y will equal the weight. Well, the thing is, I just noticed, hey, the angles are equal. That means T1Y equals T2Y, which equals half of the weight. So if I solve for one of them, I can solve for the weight. This is kind of one of those things of speed the process up. Don't be wasting time doing a problem if you can go ahead and do it a little more quickly. So if I try to solve for just one of the Y components, I'll solve for T1Y, I can really solve this problem quickly. So T1Y will equal 60 times the sine of 45. 60 T1, okay? And so that will equal, let me get that, 42, I'm going to go ahead and add it, include a decimal there, 42.4 newtons. Basically my rule with rounding is like usually three or four, uh, two or three sig figs. If they're whole numbers, sometimes I round it off, especially if they're like in the hundreds, I round it off. All right, so 42.4 newtons. Well, this equals half of the weight. So that means the weight equals 84.8 newtons. And there you go, I'm almost done. 84.8 newtons equals m times 10, divide by 10. The mass of this object is 8.48 kilograms. Okay, that's what we're looking at. Let's look at another one. We have three problems, that's number one. Number two, a 50 newton object is hung by two wires. All right. Wire A is hung at 70 degrees, wire B is hung at 26.6 degrees from the horizontal. Wire A has a tension of 45 newtons. So 70 degrees for wire A. Let me make this a little larger. Oops. Back here. All right, let me make the problem a little bit larger. We've got wire A, 70 degrees, and has a tension of 45 newtons. And the other one is not, it's more horizontal, 26.6 degrees. And then the weight actually gives us the weight of the 50 newton object, so the weight is 70 newtons. And it wants us to basically find all the information about wire B. It wants to know the TBY, TBX, and TB. Okay? So let's go through this. Let's figure out what I can do. Well, the thing is, I can't do anything with the weight right now. The only thing I can do with the weight is it will equal the two Y components. So let me go ahead and draw in the components on both sides here. And so what we have is, I can solve for T-A-X, T-A-Y, sorry, and T-A-X, so I'm going to do that. So T-A-Y equals 45 sine of 70, and T-A-X equals 45 sine, oops, not, not sine, cosine of 70. And so if I solve for these, 45 times 70 sine, this comes out to 42 newtons, and TAX comes out to 15 newtons. All right. So what can I find from there? Well, TBX is going to equal the TAX, so this is 15 newtons. Done. One part finished. They have to be equal to each other. Now, don't get confused that the drawings aren't going to be perfect. Okay. Some people get all upset and go, wait, this vector right here is so much longer. Shouldn't it be a larger number? I didn't draw the scale. That's basically what you can say. It's not drawn the scale. Okay? But TBX would be 15 newtons. Let me figure out. Technically, I can use now that and solve for everything else. But let's go ahead and confirm. So there's multiple ways to go about this. I'm going to go ahead and use the weight and the TAY to solve for TBY. TBY would equal 70 minus 42 which equals 28 newtons. And then if I do Pythagorean theorem, 15 squared plus 28 squared, square root it, this will give me about 32 newtons for a TB. All right? If you use the angle, if you use the angle, it's possible that things might not come out perfectly. It might come out slightly different. Let me double check it. Okay.
look at the last problem. Okay, let's look at the last problem with this. We have a 46.5 kilogram object that's in the middle of a wire, which causes the wire to bend down equally on both sides. Okay, that's key. Equal on both sides. Okay. What is the angle of the wire on both sides? So here we go. We've got weight, tension, and tension. Okay. The weight of the object will be 46.5 times 10. So the weight is 465 newtons. 465 newtons. And it says the, each wire will be 625 newtons. Okay? So you only have to, again, worry about this on one side. You don't have to do both. Okay? You can skip that. You can do one side. And so if we do this, if this is 465 newtons, some people get stuck and go, well, how do I get up to the triangle? Well, if both angles are exactly the same, which is what this is stating, the Ty will equal half of the weight. So 465 divided by 2, 232.5, that would be your answer. And then from there, I would go ahead and solve for the angle. What is this going to be? It's going to be sine, opposite over adjacent. So sine angle will equal... 232.5 divided by 625, okay, 625, and then you just do the inverse sign. So 232.5 divided by 625, inverse sign, and that is 21 degrees. Let me double check that, 232.5 by 625, yep, 21 degrees, or 22 degrees. The angle will be 22 degrees from the horizontal. And there you go. So multiple ways to solve it, but again, it all goes back to these rules. These rules right here, okay? This is what's most important. So you'll get some practice doing a few of these problems and be all set to go. All right, thank you.